Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video from me. Today we're going to be doing up a follow-up from my previous video. In my last video, I talked about getting the best streaming settings for OBS Studio and streaming on live stream platforms. If you guys feel like that's a video you need or you're curious about that, the link for that will be in the description below. Along with my Twitch channel, which I do stream six to seven days a week on twitch.tv backslash Shane Live starting around 1 to 2 p.m. Central Time, streaming all sorts of stuff. If you guys want to find me there, come chill. You're more than welcome to. Link in the description. I also have another question for you guys right quick. Let me know if you have any video ideas, anything having to do with streaming. Let me know. I also thought of a cool video idea that was maybe talking about esports and joining a esports org and how to go about that and how I did that myself as I'm currently representing the esports organization Pyronic which is always linked in my description below, them and all their socials, cool dudes. Second question, I used to upload gaming. As I'm now taking my channel and reviving it and moving it into a different direction and sharing information that I feel like I have a lot of in this topic that I can provide, I also play very new, relevant single player games. So if I were to do two videos a week instead of one, the, the how-tos, the tutorials, the tips and tricks, talking about tr Twitch and trending topics on top of a single player let's play, for instance, if we call it that. Also on top of that. Now that would be more than one video a week, which you're thinking, what's the problem here? Does that bother you? When you sub to me for these tutorials, these topics, talking about Twitch and how to progress your your social media live streaming career, would it bother you if that same person on that same channel was also uploading gaming content on top of that. It wouldn't cut back or take into any of the time on my other videos. It would just be added on top of it. Let me know in the comments below. Seriously, please, that helped me out a lot. But all right, let's get into this video. This is going to be recording settings for OBS. We're gonna pop over to my display capture here and we have my other OBS open up here and we're gonna hop into settings by going into settings. Um, I'm not going to address too much uh, like I kind of did in the other video about the general tab and stuff like that, but we're gonna get into the main nitty gritty and that is streaming settings. My first tip before you even launch OBS is by running it as an administrator every time. By doing that, you right click the icon and run as administrator. That is going to help you out with um, just performance issues, crashing issues, and errors and it'll just be a little bit more stable next uh we can ignore the general tab and we can also ignore the stream tab because we're not streaming um, output tab is very important we're gonna save that for last audio tab is very simple you are going to go to your desktop audio and set your headset or speakers and you're going to go to the mic slash auxiliary auto audio excuse me and set your microphone and that will make sure that it's going to capture your voice and capture audio coming through your headset. The video tab is pretty simple. You are going to put the base canvas resolution um, to your monitor. That is the native resolution of your monitor. Excuse my phone, I didn't put it on silent. I got a Twitter follower because I'm trash. So you're gonna leave your base canvas resolution at your native resolution. I have a 1080p monitor, so that's what I have mine at, 1920 by 1080. Your output scale resolution is going to be one of two things. One, it is also going to be 1920 by 1080 if you plan on not streaming while recording, okay? If you plan on streaming while recording, you're gonna set this output scaled resolution to whatever you're streaming in. 16 by 900 if you're streaming in 900p, uh, 1280 by 720 if you're streaming in 720p, and then your downscale filter, which is only gonna have to do with your stream because this isn't gonna, we're gonna be talking about this later. Uh, set it to whatever you're doing. FPS, this is going to be the FPS you're recording and streaming in. I would strongly suggest 60 FPS that is that, as that is now very good quality and standards. And that's pretty, gonna, pretty much gonna be it there. Uh, advanced tab, you're gonna wanna leave everything here except to get a little bit better quality um, maybe not quality, but just vibrance in your gameplay. We're going to change the color space from 601 to 709 and the color range from partial to full. That is going to change your video, not your webcam or anything like that. It's just going to change your video and that's going to just give you a little bit more full colors. It's going to give you the full color range and it's just going to make things look a little bit better. 
Now we can get into the output tab. This is the, the big important stuff. You can leave the streaming tab um, because we're not really touching that. You could also leave the audio and replay buffer. If you're not seeing this like I am, you need to change your output mode from simple to advanced. We're gonna focus on this recording tab. The first thing you're gonna do is type is gonna be on standard. Your record path is completely up to you. Um, you can browse and set it to wherever you want if you have a hard drive or a specific folder made. Recording format, I personally prefer MP4. This kind of depends on what you prefer and what your editing software is. Um, but if you're just using standard editing software is, or you're just uploading a raw file, MP4 is uh, definitely the way to go. It's not gonna be a very big file compared to the others. And it's going to work in literally 99.9% .9 of all editing softwares. Um, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is um, audio track. We can separate audio tracks. I will show you how to do that. Uh, and what that means is you can make your microphone and your gameplay sounds two separate um, tracks. So you can edit them if you need to increase or decrease just your mic volume or increase or decrease just your gameplay volume. So depending how it selects one track, if you just want them in one track, if you do want to split, make sure to select two. We're going to make the encoder the new NVIDIA encoder. So NVIDIA NVEC H264 new. Now, this is important. If you are recording and streaming, which means in the video tab, you put your out, output scaled resolution to what you're streaming in. So this isn't the same. This isn't in 1080 in your recording and streaming. You need to go and check mark, check mark rescale output and put it to 1920 by 1080 or the, the res of your monitor. So this means when you click start streaming and start recording at the same time, even though you're streaming in 900p or 720p, whatever you're doing, you're going to be recording in 1080p because that's important right we want that 1080p quality for youtube but if these are both 1080p and that's your base resolution they're both you're not streaming you're you're just recording it and that's it then you don't have to worry about that you can just uncheck mark that don't even worry about it this is where it gets really important you're going to change your rate control to cqp and your cq level is going to be from 10 to 15. now i wouldn't suggest much lower than 10 it actually is going backwards in terms of good quality to worse quality if you are streaming and recording i would suggest setting this to 15. Um, if you are just recording i would suggest setting this to 10. you're going to get a little bit better quality your key interval frame is going to be set to two your preset is going to be set to max quality your profile is going to be set to high and you can leave look ahead and psycho visual tuning checkmarked. Um, and also leave GPU and max B frames default, which is zero and two. And you're good to go. To get that extra video or to get, excuse me, to get that extra audio track, um, after you have selected um, both one and two track, you're going to want to go to your uh, either or your audio mixer and click the little settings wheel and go to fill uh, excuse me click the little settings wheel and go to advanced audio properties and you're going to want to uncheck mark all of these okay except leave your desktop audio to one okay then you're going to want to check mark all these uncheck mark all of these except for mic and leave it on two desktop everything uncheck marked but one mic everything uncheck marked but two. So that means your desktop is going to record to audio track one and your mic is going to record to audio track two because we had in the output here, we had audio track one and two selected. Hey, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. That is how to get the best recording settings um, for OBS. If this did help you, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it dearly, dearly helps my youtube channel out if you guys have any comments questions concerns or problems feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i would love it if you guys answered my questions from the start of the video that'd be an enormous help for me and i'd love to give you guys the quality and the content that you're looking for i do stream like i said on twitch about six to seven days a week if you guys want to check that out link will be in the description below along with my other social medias all optionable options of course i love you guys stay safe stay clean have a good one Lay late.